All right, YouTubers, we are here with these LT1 heads, and I'm at Clinton Machine Shop. We're gonna flow these guys to see what actually they flow. A little home ported deal. You guys wanna stay tuned for that. What Dennis is doing now, he's just uh, getting all the clay out at the port right here, flow bench. We're gonna see exactly how bad or good my little home port job did. You have any predictions? Uh, I mean, on this bench, based off other LT ones I've had on here, maybe 240, 245. I guess that's better than two what 220s with they flow stock. I've seen stock ones at 220 on here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, as long as it's more than 220, I'll be happy. So what does it take to get them like flowing in the 270s? A lot of work? You really got to hit the turns pretty hard. Mm -hmm. uh, knock them back, like really lay them over. And I'm not sure, you probably did it. Uh, on some of them, you got to really try to widen that pinch out. Yeah, I did that as much as I could. I haven't messed with too many LT1s. The few that I've widened the pinch out, I've probably been way too conservative because I really hate having to fix those. Oh, I wasn't very conservative. I did as much as I could and I raised the runners as much as I could too. So I'm hoping for 250. That's that's my uh, my they number. Might, they might do 250. I don't think that's pretty awesome. I don't think I've had too many. I don't think I've had too many LT1 heads on here that had bigger valves in them either. Yeah, I kind of uh, they've been dug out a good bit. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, 250. That's all the computer in there. Is that computer that calibrates the flow and all that stuff? Well, this, this, everything's on here. So oh, we're okay. not using liquid manometers. It's all pressure transducers. Yeah. So it's all electronic. It's, uh, I'm pretty sure that would be considered like a, uh, a pitot tube system that's in here. But all that goes through a, a six and a half horsepower shop vac. It's definitely a home built deal. Oh yeah, but hey, if it works, it works. Yep. Yeah, for small box, you know, stuff like this, I think it works reasonably well. We've had some big heads across it to where we've had to hook up a second vacuum cleaner oh, wow. to get so something that I actually trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. This part of the calibration process? It's just checking it. Gotcha. The plate's supposed to be 134.3 where it we're right there. That's pretty pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah. So the next thing is we're going to want to use a four inch plate. Oh, to represent the... Uh, yeah, and there's, a, the, there's okay. a little bit of play in this thing too. So we're going to eyeball where we want it. So he's got the plate on there, and now he's gonna put it on there and bolt it up. And then it's kind of like, I feel like this is kind of like a dyno. You, you, you hope for one number, but then you're always disappointed when you see the other number. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> the, the, way heartbreak. That, that's the way that goes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that, the wing's gone. Does that wing help in your opinion, or what does it do? Uh, you know, i am be honest with you, Tyler, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I, from what I can tell, it seems to be a controversial subject amongst people. Yeah, I think it's more for something street, right? Or do um, they have it on their high think, heads too? I think it probably helps for street RPM and lower lift camshafts. Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly seems to help on the flow bench for, uh, you know, lifts below 650-ish. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, that's a deal. Well, these never came with that, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the early AFR heads, they didn't do that stuff either. Yeah, yeah, that was their new, their new thing. I think if I started at 9, by the time it hit 0, the valve starts to move. One, two, three, and I'm just going to go through the whole sweep to make sure gotcha. nothing looks stupid on it, because I don't want to find out when I'm in the middle of Well, those things testing. have been cut a lot. I think they can go up to 700, but that would just be ridiculous oh. and not I'm gonna flow not anything. To, I'm going to flow them to 7. <laughs> Seven? All yeah. right. We're going to start at two. Yeah. And the reason for that is because this little guy, we don't necessarily have a way to regulate the depression. Yeah. So at low lifts, it pulls at a really, really high depression. And gotcha. this little guy over like 
overpressurizes at 40 inches of water. So I've just always figured out to start at 200 thousandths because on some heads, if you start less than that, it like makes this thing unhappy and can potentially damage it. Well, we don't want to do that. No. At least not on my head. You can do it on someone else's head. But like I said, I feel awful when anything happens on my stuff that causes problems. No. I mean, it's not, it wouldn't be a cylinder head situation. It would be a flow bench operator problem. And then me having to make a phone call and being told, oh, I don't make those no more. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be too good. So what does the clay do? I've always seen that. I'm not sure what it's supposed to simulate. I'll, I'll show you at the end of the test. Okay. It smooths out the air as it go, it's, it's uh, going in. If you just pull air into square edges, it, mm -hmm. the flow drops. Really? Um, it, it's kind of a situation that just makes it super turbulent right there. I had, uh, you know, sometimes it'll be 20 CFM, uh, sometimes it'll be 50 CFM that you'll wow, see Wow, 50. Yeah, depending if it's... That's incredible. Especially if it's a head that has a whole lot going on at the port yeah. at certain lifts, and if you take this off, it'll nosedive. Um, one of these days, I probably need to invest in some, like, fixed aluminum plates that are machined with a radius on it, so I'm not playing... Well, mine would throw you off because the bolt holes aren't the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, sorry, you got LT1, can't do anything for you. So far, we're at 179, 180. All I think right. it's going to bounce a little bit. Yeah, yeah. If it gets turbulent, it's going to bounce a lot. A whole bunch, gotcha. All right. We're at... Hey, we're already past uh, stock. That's good. Already past stock. Let's see if we can't keep the train going. Uh-oh. Oh, I made my mark. 258. 260. Oh, 259. Starting it. 257. Yes. What lift is that at? I'm going to call it 259. 259. I'll take it. Just round up. Oh, 260. Look at that. 262. Well, I think we're hitting turbulence now. Yep. So 260 is uh, the match, right? right now i'll i'll finish where i'm at just okay. for the sake of fixed numbers so before we were right around that 258 259 at 500 lift when we had the clay on it like yeah we should. yeah so no clay this would be good good test wow 228 230. That's, CFM. that's huge yeah. We're back to stock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't. That's uh, incredible. Yeah, you can't flow these things without some sort of radius on them. Um, there's some companies that make really nice fixed. Yeah, yeah. You know, Think they'd flow more, a little higher number with that, or is they the probably pretty do good? because they're probably thicker. Gotcha. And it probably has a better radius on it than what I can do with my fingers and a random thing of clay I grabbed out of a tub. Um, but I just haven't bothered to. To spend like the sixty or seventy dollars. Hey, I mean that's that's good information. Right. I Especially, didn't expect them. I didn't expect them to flow to. What was what was the peak again? Uh, two sixty four at five fifty. Two sixty four. Not too bad. Nope. Now I don't think I've ever had any heads across this bench that had bigger valves than them. All the ones I've done have had like one ninety four. Ninety fours. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably a little bottleneck. Yep. All right. So tell us what happened real quick. <laughs> so we ran through a complete flow test. And then after I was done with the flow test, I realized that we didn't actually clamp the head down. So we decided we probably should go back and do the test again with the head clamped down properly just to eliminate the possibility of sucking air around the plate. Yeah. We went back and did it, and we went all the way up to 550, and the numbers all matched within one or two. So we just decided we're obviously our mistake we made of not clamping them down didn't seem to cause any problems well, with the data. I'm happy. I, I don't feel so bad now. So right. 
If I would have saw the numbers drop, drop down a whole bunch, I would just would have been let down and if you would have probably asked, would have been if depressed. You, <laughs> if you would have asked me beforehand, I would have told you that you just lost 10 CFM when we went back and did it. So I'm surprised we didn't. Well, that's like we said. They probably was sucking that plate up right up against the head. So yeah, and luckily around. this one fits with a little bit of an interference. It's not like some of the other ones that'll I'll do that. Yeah, wiggle yeah. and wobble all over the place. Like. This four and a half oh, yeah. inch plate has a sharpie mark because obviously the head that was on it, <laughs> it was, was had a little zone. bit of play. Yeah, yeah. And I had yeah. to make a reference mark to make sure it kept going back on in the same spot. <sighs> Guys, I apologize for stopping this video. I did something very uncharacteristic of me. It was late that night, so I did control A, select all the files in the card. I just went in the window and did shift select. And I missed the last three files. That was the entire exhaust flowing portion of the video. I apologize about that. But he did write the numbers down, of course. And the numbers on the exhaust was 197 CFM at 600. And he went up to 700. And it's still, unlike the uh, intake side, that started taking a nosedive at around 557 lift. The intake just kept on going up. And at 700, which is unrealistic, will never take this motor to that lift, was about 223. So it didn't really gain that much, but it did go up. Now, Dennis, he's gonna make a custom cam for this, and I know that does go out of the spectrum of budget build, but I'm religiously bad at choosing cams for my motors. The small block that I have, the cam's too big. It probably is okay at nitrous, but motor is too big. And the LT1, the cam was almost pretty good but talking to Dennis he thinks there's a lot more in the motor because the fastest I ran last time was a this LT1 was a 1150 at 117 miles an hour in a and the calculations he did with everything that I have the compression was way more than I thought so that's why I had to run pretty much low timing that motor and I think the most I could run the LT1 on pump gas was um was about uh, 30 to 32 degrees of pump gas. If I went any more than that, the thing would detonate all over the place. So he's gonna hook me up with a custom cam that's gonna use the, the max benefit of these heads and the intake that I'm running. And hopefully I can get it down into low 11s and fingers crossed a 1090. We'll see. But I wanna thank everyone at Clinton Machine Shop, Dennis, everyone there. And you guys steered me in the right direction and everyone out there in YouTube land who's wrenching their cars and DIY guys, hey, keep doing it. And thank you for subscribing to my channel. Until next time, peace out.